If anyone ever asks you why you're wearing this on your head, just say you're cosplaying as an android because that's the only way to justify how you look when you're wearing the HE 1000 V2s. Hello and thank you for clicking on this video where I'll be sharing my experience talking about a headphone from Hi FM that is worth $3,000. We're at the summit fire ladies and gentlemen. This is the region where diminishing returns are often debated and even if the fact that this headphone is currently on sale for $2,000 which is a saving of $1,000, I still can't justify it and I myself still can't believe I spent that much money on a headphone to begin with. But that's the nature of this hobby or any other hobby or interest. There's just no way anyone can ever justify spending any amount of money on something that they enjoy or love but it's something that they love and they enjoy so all we can do is simply respect it be it headphones action figures handbags designer clothing if you can spend thousands on a purse that could barely hold a phone but judge me for spending on my audio gears that's just being a hypocrite so enjoy what you enjoy ladies and gentlemen and let us all share the experience with that rant out of the way let's talk about accessories if you haven't already check out the unboxing video links is in the description down below but essentially you get the headphone some manuals and three interchangeable cases cables with three different terminations and these cables are horrible. They feel like the cheap hose you use to water your garden or like a balloon. Either way for $3,000 this was quite disappointing so I kept them in a box and locked them away and used these instead. These are the hard audio cables and no this is not a sponsored video. I wish this was a sponsored video but look at these cables. It feels a lot more premium than the provided cables and this connection here where you can interchange connection without having to change the entire cable is gold. If you want to check them out I'll leave a link in the description down below. At least you get that pleather case which unfortunately is of no use as fitting this headphone in and out would be a chore so the box is just kept in storage. For design everything about the HE 1000 V2 looks great for me with a small exception of this timber laminate around the cups is a little bit unfinished and a little cheap looking especially for a $3,000 headphone. However it does give a little bit of color to the overall headphone design including the headband which I have put a black cover over it and I'll admit it does not make it look any better but it does protect the headband from my head oils and sweat and over time those head oils can change the color of the headband so i shall prolong the inevitable for as long as i can hence this black thing other than that the difference in the shades of gray between the grills and the metal band on the headphone just adds to the dimension of the headphone design it's not your typical black on black headphone as many other headphones have adopted so it's almost fresh to see something popping on your shelf and aside from making me look like a robot personally i think this headphone looks really good and it has its own unique identity that stands out from the rest of the pack. For fit and comfort there are many levels to adjusting the headband and despite being 450 grams which is not to say the lightest nor is it the heaviest it actually feels a lot lighter than it weighs due to the weight distribution and the clamping force is just nice for me so it doesn't cause any discomfort for me personally over time as some other headphones do like the Focal Clear however there's no denying it this headphone will make you the elephant in the room because it just makes you stand out and yes it makes me look ridiculous having that massive cup over my ears which makes me look like Dumbo and that headband going over my head like antennas and it just doesn't look like a conventional headphone which as I said before is unique but beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Of course you're going to forget about it once you put it on your head but you're going to be noticing people staring at you from across the room. I've had friends just giving me that what the hell do you have on your head and do you need to see a specialist to get that removed. Kind of look so often that I've embraced it as a good thing because then they would keep their hands off the $3,000 item that's sitting on my head. Okay I'm going on a tangent here. Let's talk about sound. For bass, if you're hoping to get the deepest rumble and the hardest thump on your bass, you're not going to get it here. However, what you do get in return is a very clean, fast hitting, textured bass. This headphone showed me what planar magnetic drivers can do to bass and it may not be hard hitting but it's quality nonetheless. You hear the thump, you hear the rumble, I've made the analogy of an uncontrolled looking bass compared to a well controlled, disciplined, tight bass which is what you get with the HE1000 V2. But for me personally, I would prefer just a touch more bass just to get it to a level that would satisfy my needs. But it's at a level where you can't say it has no bass while still maintaining a very clean presentation that just paves the way for other sounds to come through. I actually gave this headphone just a little bit of bass boost with a little bit of EQ which inadvertently changed this headphone to a V-shaped headphone while sacrificing some sounds which I'll explain later but 
oh, does it sound so much sexier now. For mid-range, I personally love the mids on this headphone. The overall presentation sounds a little recessed, but the vocal still has its presence. It still sounds in front of all the background sound, and this just helps with the perception of space because even though they sound a little further away, you hear everything in detail without the vocals being lost in the track, and you hear all the accompaniment. It's truly an enjoyable experience if you like that spacious sounding presentation, and for me personally, I can't get enough of it. If you prefer the vocals being a little bit more forward, then this headphone may not suit you. Female vocals can sound a little thin depending on the tracks, but I'm really nitpicking here. For the treble, the high Feminine headphones are probably ones to test and see if you're sensitive to bright headphones. And this headphone is no exception because it is bright with a capital B. That's what this headphone taught or demonstrated to me, that open, airy sound, which whenever I hear this kind of sound on any headphones or IEM, I better prepare my ears to be pierced. If you really want to test whether your headphone is sibling without using music, listen to the man himself, Joshua Valor. That man's voice is the epitome of a V-shaped sound signature, deep bass with striking highs. The travel probably helps with the detail and imaging, but boy, do you have to test it out first to see if you can handle them. However, this is extremely track dependent, and if you're into a lot of female tracks, especially Chinese songs or badly recorded tracks, God have mercy on your eardrums. I know I'm making it sound very negative because I keep coming back to this headphone despite the treble and I'm probably more sensitive to the 9kHz region compared to other people, so your experience may vary, but you have been warned. For soundstage, when you talk about king of soundstage, everyone talks about the Sennheiser HD800S, and I'd personally put the HD1000V2 up for a fight for that title, if not settle for being the queen, because this headphone is wide. And not only is it wide, but it sounds tall because look at the driver, and possibly the slightly recessed mids help with that illusion. Everything I've heard or read about the HD800S, I'm experiencing with this headphone at least. People talk about being in a concert hall, and I still think that's an over-exaggeration unless you have a really wild imagination, which some people do and that's great, but for me, when a sound sounds like it's far away from you, in this instance, if it's even a step or two steps away from you, that's an illusion in itself because a sound that's directly being fed into your ears is sounding two steps away from your head. That's what you experience with a wide sounding headphone. Separation, imaging, precision, all check. Sounds coming from the left and right, position of those sounds, it's clear, it's distinct, and it's another awesome experience to have. This headphone turned me into a sound stage junkie. I loved every bit of it. Granted, I have not heard headphones more expensive than this, but for now, this remains at the top for detailing and soundstage for me personally. I've listened to a lot of tracks which just sounds convoluted or congested on other IEMs or headphones, but the HG 1000 V2 holds its ground and lets you hear all of them without sacrificing the music. For Source Gear being an already bright headphone from my personal experience, I'd stay away from any Source Gear that brings in more quote-unquote clean or analytical sound. So any other source gear that supposedly bring in more quote-unquote warmth would benefit this headphone a lot. For example, I've tested this headphone with the THX 789 and Burson Composer DAC, and by the end of one song with female vocals, I thought my ears were bleeding from being stabbed repeatedly with that treble. It was painful. So I hooked this up to the Hi Fireman EF400 as a DAC with the Singer SA1 as the amp and the treble was slightly smoother, sound was much warmer, but it may sound a little too lush for some so the EF400 being the only source gear strikes the best balance between clean details and a warmer sound. Hi Fireman headphone working best with its own source gear. Who would have thought? For power, this headphone does take a bit to power compared to other headphones. On my EF400 on low gain, I need to get up to about 12 o'clock and on my Singer SA1 on low gain, I'm essentially on max. I even read people saying pushing more power into this headphone brings out more from this headphone, but all I'm getting is more travel, so I can't say I'm, I have the same experience in getting the best sound out of the highest volume. In fact, all you're doing with increasing the volume is just making the sound leak even more because the sound leaks a lot. At the highest volume, you're essentially sharing what you're hearing with everyone else in the room. I mean, you could even use it as a mini speaker instead if you're lazy to put this on your head.
My wife thought I was going deaf because she could hear what I'm hearing and thought I'm on maximum volume, but this is just how it is with the HiFemin HE1000 V2s. You're only getting very little incremental gains in volume despite turning up the volume knob, but I'd still be careful as different source gears have different power. On my HiFemin EF400, I get a bit of gain from turning the volume knob from 9 to 12 o'clock, but on my Singer SA1, I'm going from loud to just slightly louder from 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock on the volume dial. So to sum it all up, I'm honestly surprised this headphone isn't turning up more often in people's recommended list. But then again, this isn't the best of the best yet. But for me, I think it should be in the running, especially for the price that it is asking relative to other higher end headphones with their asking price. At the end of the day, I'll let you decide if spending two or three thousand dollars on a headphone is worth it. However, I do personally recommend that you try this headphone first if you can, as you should with any gear just to see if the treble suits you. And if it does, enjoy the ride, my friends. So does this headphone sound good? No, it sounds amazing. It is expensive? Hell yes. I actually sold this headphone because of my guilt for spending so much on a headphone only to buy it again because I just miss listening to it. And I honestly couldn't find any other headphones on a lower budget that sounds like this. Sure, there are some that comes close, but when you've experienced what's great, it's hard to settle because it just feels and sounds like something's missing. It's not perfect, but it's really great. Now I have to sell all my underwears in hopes I can recoup spending all that money on this headphone. <sighs> this hobby is a black hole. With that all said, that concludes my honest experience with the hi fi Man HE1000 V2s. However, I'm curious to hear from other HE1000 V2 owners as well, if you're out there. Is this the best headphone you've heard or is there one better at this price range? Share with me your experience in the comment section down below and if you like this video, do consider hitting the like and subscribe button. I truly appreciate each and every one of your support. Thank you all very much for watching. Until the next experience, happy listening.